<laughs> What's up, guys? Oh, hi, all. Today's show is gonna be a little on the short side. After last week, my break's really welcome. Hope you're all ready to tune in. I'm Riley. I'm Rila. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Bulletin, Bulletin Weekly. Weekly. Let's start with something pretty interesting from Cartoon Network. They're going ahead and making a linear TV series based around their new property, the Mighty Magiswords. It's basically a transmedia experience. A property that was intended to encompass more than just a cartoon. It's supposed to have animated shorts, vlogs by the characters, and other interactive elements all wired through an app. The series itself is about a pair of siblings, Warriors for Hire, who complete jobs using their huge arsenal of magic swords, which are, well, magic swords. How creative! Bless their hearts. They're trying. They're trying so very hard. In some less fun news, it looks like Sausage Party is in trouble. Well, more specifically, the studio that made Sausage Party's in trouble. Apparently, local Unifor 2000, a Vancouver-based union, filed a complaint against the studio. The situation exploded not long ago in the comments of an interview with the film's directors. Allegedly, Nitrogen, the studio behind the movie, didn't pay a ton of its artists for overtime. That's not all, either. Apparently, around half of the animation staff wasn't even credited on the movie. Look, we have no idea what's true and what's not. But, if it's legit, then it's an example of malpractice at its finest. It'd be sleazy as hell and someone would be in for an ass kicking. Small story here, but apparently Image Comics is relocating to Portland, Oregon because of the rising costs out in California. That's an odd choice. Not really. Dark Horse and Oni Press are out in Oregon too. Figure it only makes sense. Image isn't DC or Marvel. They're an indie publisher with like 12 in-office employees. Prominent or not, the Bay Area is pretty pricey. So now for the gaming news. And believe me, there isn't a lot. First up, Witcher 3's Game of the Year edition just came out last weekend. And with it came the main game getting a huge patch, apparently addressing a lot of its initial bugs. That's pretty nice of them. Making so people with a normal game don't have to pay for it again to get those fixes. Right. We'll link a page on the patch notes below for anyone interested in checking that out. Konami, you're really starting to annoy me with your crap! What? If there's one gaming company that earns my ire more than EA, it's Konami. Not only do they basically screw Kojima over and unveil that ridiculous new Metal Gear game Survive, but look at this! Metal Gear Solid V, the definitive experience? I don't get it. It basically cobbles together Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain with all the DLC and junk. So if you already have those games, there's literally no reason to get it. They're not animating any of the lost story bits, expanding on any of the missing missions. It's just a cash grab. But Witcher 3... ...isn't being marketed as a definitive experience, just a Game of the Year edition. This is a fine deal for people without either game, but there's a ton of content missing. And this so-called definitive experience isn't gonna have that missing content. So, the game isn't done. Nope! And Konami wants to win us back. Yeah, right! Japan time! First up, we have a little news from the creator of Squid Girl. Masahiro Anbei is starting up a new manga project. The English title is Gather Mystery Research Club. Ah, there goes that marvelously creative titling anime is known for. Oh, hush. I'm not wrong. I mean, really just let that title sink in. Hush! Anyway, the series is going to follow a student by the name of Daisuke, who's having trouble choosing a club to join, and... And meet some girl or something that ropes him into a club and shenanigans ensue. Am I right? Could you not? You did say you wanted me to pay more attention to this stuff. Clearly mistakes were made. Now, let's talk for a bit about Kamen Rider again. The cast, staff, and the theme song artist have been revealed for the new X8 series in the franchise. Christ, the costume makes the Power Rangers look tame! Welcome to Kamen Rider, Riley. Anyway, the lead is being played by Hiroki Ijima, Toshiki Seto is playing Kamen Rider Brave, and Ukyo Matsumoto is playing Kamen Rider Snipe. We'll leave a link below for you guys to check out the rest. And why are they all doctors? What does that have to do with- Riley, it's Kamen Rider. You can't logic Kamen Rider. But... <sighs> so young, 
So naive. Same age. Anyone who's a fan of Spice and Wolf should get a kick out of this. The author of the light novel, Isuna Hasakura, is going to be a guest at New York Comic Con. Ah, crap! I forgot about the New York one! That wing's gonna be murder! Yen Press also announced a 17-volume Spice and Wolf omnibus, slated for an October release. You're trying to ignore how much work we have ahead of us, aren't you? And failing miserably. All right, now for this week's North American releases. Not a lot on it that really stands out for me. But, Wagnaria 3 is there for anime. So funny. Hmm? Ah, oh, the next volume of Monster Musume's on here too. Cool. Also, Attack on Titan, Lost Girls is just hitting the shelves. And God Eater 2. I actually just got my copy on day one. Can't wait to get into it. That's our show, everyone. Told ya. Slim week. It was a pretty mixed set, though. Usually it swings pretty far positive or negative. I'm just amazed we got through it without... What? Ugh, never mind. Probably best I don't say anything. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked what you saw, give our like button a zap. Share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Bulletoon Weekly. I'm Rila. I'm Riley. And as always, stay tuned.